Okay, to keep up with uh, Project Drawdown, they have put out a new table of uh, an update of leading climate solutions and there are lots of details uh, in every solution that has been updated. I'm going to show you one example of so the kind of details that go into each of the ones I'm going to read off uh, just to give you uh, a pointer to go and click on uh, if you want to follow up. So I'm just going to be brief again here uh, so that you are aware that an update has been made uh, including the amount of carbon uh, drawdown possible with each solution uh, towards uh, the 2 degrees C target and the 1.5 degrees C target by 2100 with 67% uh, probabilities as we have been talking about. So Project Drawdown uses different scenarios to assess what determined global efforts to address uh, climate change might look like. Both scenarios shown here are plausible and economically realistic. This is obviously very important as we see with all the struggles, uh, especially when we are hit with multiple uh, compound events like the pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine and their impact on the economy food security, energy security, and so on. Drawdown scenario 1 is roughly in line with the 2 degree C temperature rise by 2100, while drawdown 2 scenario is roughly in line with the 1.5 degree temperature rise at the century's end. The results shown here are based on projected emissions impact globally. The relative importance of a given solution can differ significantly depending on the context and particular ecological, economic, uh, political and social conditions. We invite deeper dive into the many particularities uh, and nuances of all these solutions. So you should go and click on each item uh, if you're interested. What do you see if you click? So one of the items we'll look at is called seafloor uh, sea protection. Vast amounts of carbon stored in seafloor sediments risk release by bottom trawling fishing, which is a menace right now in terms of overfishing and a lot of uh, uh, accidental kills uh, that are not intended. Bottom trawling bans and establishment of marine protected areas can protect uh, these important carbon sink, this important carbon sink. Uh, impact. Bottom trawling contributes little to the global food supply, but when it disturbs carbon-rich sediments, it can contribute significantly to the greenhouse gas burden in the atmosphere. Protecting 183.38 uh, to 383.65 million hectares of seafloor from bottom trawling could reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 3.80 to 5.14 gigatons between 2020 and 2050. So even though these numbers uh, may not look like they are big, but their contribution towards the 1.5 and 2 degrees C warming targets add up, especially when you consider all the items that are on this list. Uh, the uh, Drawdown project also considers adoption scenarios. We developed five custom adoption scenarios based on a variety of assumptions regarding the amount of ocean areas in marine protected areas by 2050 and annual growth rate of MPAs. We calculated the impact of increased adoption of seafloor protection from 2020 to 2050 by comparing two growth scenarios with a reference scenario in which the market share was fixed at current level. So some assumptions go in which you can quibble about but that's not the point. Scenario 1, 283.38 million hectares of degraded seafloor are protected. 58% of the total uh, available ocean area uh, right now. Scenario 2, 383.65 million hectares of degraded seafloor are protected which counts to 78% of total available ocean area. Okay, and then they provide emissions reduction and carbon storage. Uh, financial models are used in cases where uh, the costs are not accrued by the, the government. Uh, in terms of emissions reductions and carbon storage, to calculate emissions reductions, we used the average carbon storage in sediments of EEZs, which are exclusive economic zones where trawling is occurring based on one global meta-analysis, which is analysis of 
published reports multiplied by penetration depth of the trawling gear, how deep the sediment is dug up based on 11 sources, percent of labile organic matter, reactive organic matter which is subject to a weathering or release of uh, carbon based on 28 sources, percent of organic matter disturbed by trawling based on 24 sources, rate of remineralization to carbon dioxide based on one source and standard carbon to carbon dioxide conversion rate. The result was an emission reduction of 13.83 metric tons of carbon dioxide per hectare per year. Okay, so re remember the numbers of hectares we're talking about and imagine the numbers of CO2 being uh, uh, be being uh, not released. Okay, I'm stumbling for words. We estimated carbon storage in protected areas at 505.37 metric tons of carbon per hectare based on 115 data points from one global meta-analysis. Okay, so I'll just go through the, the list and you can look at the scenario 1 and 2, so 2 degree C and uh, 1.5 degree C uh, reductions in uh, gigatons CO2 per uh, year. I don't know why I could chop that off. Um, okay, so let's uh, make sure that I have the number right or maybe even put it in so that there is no confusion. Uh, yeah, so that's gigaton CO2 equivalent reduced or sequestered by 2015 which I'm going to put right here in uh, a separate slide so that uh, it's obvious what we are talking about when we look at the table. Uh, so I'm doing this live as I'm recording which is not the best idea but hey that's what happens when you don't fully prepare. Okay, gigaton CO2 equivalent reduced or sequestered between 2020 and 2050 uh, those are the numbers we are talking about here, so it gives you a sense of... Uh, you can look at the emissions gaps we have talked about before, about the emissions rates at present and where we will end up if we don't do anything with uh, 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 voluntary NDCs or conditional and unconditional NDCs and so on, how much CO2, uh, additional CO2 needs to be withdrawn uh, for meeting the targets and then you can put, try to put these in that context. But here maybe you should just try to look for the relative size. Uh, some of them are smaller than others. Abandoned farmland restoration, for example, affecting land sinks uh, has the potential for 12.48 gigatons in scenario 1 and 20.32 gigatons in uh, scenario 2. And th at the same time, industry and buildings have a much larger number at 42.73 and 48.75 gigatons between 2020 and 2050. Okay. Alternative cement, bamboo protection, uh, alternative refrigerants uh, in buildings and industries, that's what I meant before. Bicycle infrastructure, uh, small but significant biochar production, smaller but significant biogas for cooking, biomass power, bioplastics. Just reading through them gives you a sense of how much detail Project Drawdown goes into and how it considers every possible uh, climate solution for this update. Okay, and I'm not going to read the sectors, but you can go through this. Building automation systems, building retrofitting. We have used the Empire State Building as an example before, uh, which has been phenomenal success. Carpooling, clean cooking, coastal wetland protections, uh, coastal wetland restoration. So when it comes to vegetation, forests, coastland, wetland, peatland, uh, etc. It's uh, protection, restoration and management are always key uh, factors. Composting, concentrated solar power as opposed to PV. Uh, conservation agriculture, distributed energy storage, distributed solar pho photovoltaics, here we are. District heating, dynamic glass, efficient aviation, efficient ocean shipping, efficient trucks, electric bicycles, electric cars, electric trains, 
family planning and education in the sector of health and education. Look at the number there, 68.90 for both scenarios in terms of gigatons uh, restored or uh, reduced between 2020 and 2050. Farm irrigation efficiency, forest protection, geothermal power, grassland protection, green and cool roofs, grid flexibility, high efficiency heat pumps, high performance glass, high speed rail, hybrid cars, improved aquaculture, uh, small but still uh, has externalities like uh, deoxygenation, uh, viruses, disease pressure on fish in the open area associated nearby to the aquaculture and so on. Improved cattle feed, uh, we talked about feeding them uh, seaweed to reduce methane emissions for example, improved fisheries, improved manure management, improved rice production we have talked about, indigenous peoples, uh, forest tenure, insulation, landfill methane capture, LED lighting, low flow fixtures for electricity in buildings, microalgae protection and restoration managed grazing we have talked about under land uh, enhancing land sinks, methane digesters for biogas, methane leak management which has there's been a new agreement under UNFCC for reducing methane leaks by 2030 but uh, so far it's still struggling. Micro wind turbines, microgrids, multi strata agroforestry which you have talked about, net zero buildings, nuclear power, nutrient management, uh, ocean power, offshore wind turbines, some new exciting designs coming along. This could be very important because if you invest a lot in offshore wind uh, energy and uh, global warming begins to affect them negatively then you want to be able to move them. So there are designs that are looking at these. Onshore wind turbines, similar uh, uh, issues in terms of how wind potential for wind energy changes with global warming. Peatland protection and rewetting, perennial biomass production uh, which is very important for land sinks. Uh, perennial staple crops, we talked about these. Plant rich diets, reducing meat consumption. Public transit, public transportation is a big one but you can see plant rich diets here have a huge number uh, in terms of gigatons between 2020 and 2050 at 78.33 gigatons and 103.11 gigatons. Recycled metals, recycled paper, recycled plastics, recycling overall, reduced food waste which is very critical and a no-brainer and has massive potential for 88.50 gigatons for 2 degrees C warming targets between 2020 and 2050 and 102.20 gigatons uh, for scenario two. Reduced plastics, so there is recycling of plastics and reducing plastics production level. Refrigerant management, regenerative annual cropping, again land sinks as well as food agriculture. C4 protection which we looked at in a bit of detail. Uh, seaweed farming for reducing, uh, so this blue carbon uh, which can sequester three to ten times the land sinks and doesn't burn down and has some potential to reduce uh, methane emissions from cattle etc and provide food. Uh, silvo pasture which we talked about, small hydropower, smart thermostats, solar hot water, sustainable intensification for small holders, system of rice intensification so reducing methane and also uh, increasing production. Telepresence uh, this is uh, being kicked up by uh, COVID in a big way, so we have to see after a few years uh, whether uh, in-person office uh, culture comes back full time or it will permanently transition to telepresence. Uh, temperate forest restoration, tree intercropping, tree plantations on degraded land. This is, remains a, uh, a controversial topic in terms of how it will affect uh, water resources, food security and other things but this is talking about degraded lands and still raises questions about availability of water and water use. 
tropical uh, forest restoration, a no-brainer, has a significant uh, savings in uh, reduced emissions or sequestering additional carbon at 54.45 for 2 degrees C warming target and 85.14 gigatons for uh, 1.5 degrees C. Utility scale energy storage. Uh, numbers not given. Uh, utility scale solar photovoltaics uh, 40.83 and 111.59 gigatons between 2020 and 2050. Significant numbers. Walkabies. Ah, my computer. Why do you do this to me? Okay. Uh, oh Lord. Walkable cities have some contribution to make. Waste to energy is good and water distribution efficiency is good. Externalities here of course is increasing the number with safe uh, and sufficient amount of uh, water uh, availability. So water always is quantity quality access as we know. So water distribution efficiency for electricity can be very useful in reducing emissions as well. So the total for all these updated solutions is at uh, 1044.89 gigatons between 2020 and 2050 for uh, 2 degrees C warming target and 1610.47 gigatons at, for the same period for the 1.5 degree C uh, target. Okay, so I just wanted to include that here uh, since Project Draw Drawdown is very diligent about chasing these down and updating those and uh, I have to do the updates as well on my uh, YouTube channel so that you are aware of what's happening uh, if you want to keep up or if you're a newcomer to the channel. Okay, I am going to leave it here.